thank you for this opportunity that we get to come here and bless your heart and uh, give you praise and your worship. We pray, Lord, that you search our hearts as we come before you. Wash us clean, forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness, Lord God. As we praise you and we worship you, Lord God, draw closer to your heart this evening. Bless every person that is here today as we bless your heart. In Jesus' name, amen.
your mercy to me, your love, unconditional, everlasting, working for our good, Lord. Thank you so much, Lord, that you are our Abba Father. Thank you, praise your name, and bring glory to you, Lord. In your son's precious name, Amen. Thank you, Sister Jenna.
before you're seated, would you just get, turn to somebody next to you, say, Jesus loves you, give them a fist bump, an elbow tap, a chicken wing, and welcome them to the Lord, we'll be right back with you. Go ahead and greet somebody. Woo! Amen. Great. Come on up, baby, come on up, come on up. We're going to be praying for them. Specifically, there's just a special prayer of blessing we want to give them today. So they're coming on up right now. Awesome, awesome. Cheese! Want to give a quick shout out as our KPs are coming. We've got to give a quick shout out to Pastor Lindsay and Pastor Carrington over there. Over there the uh, hope you know Simon. Welcome you guys. You can see them. Amen. And then, hey, I heard we have some a crew from New Hope Leeward. Make some noise, New Hope Leeward. support. All right, we have our Katie up here. Yes, so thank you everyone for coming up. And so um, we just have a, we just want to bless these um, Katie as they are preparing to start their new school year. Many of them are starting in two days on Monday and some within the next week or two they're going to start. So we just want to make sure we keep them in mind the, the schools, the Katie, their family, as well as their teachers. Um, as many are starting in preschool or kindergarten, transitioning to middle school and then high school and even some going away to college um, in just the next couple of weeks. So this will be a big move for many families. So if you guys can go ahead and uh, extend the hand out that we would just bless these kids and what they represent to their communities, their classrooms, their teachers, and everyone that they come in contact with. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your children here um, that are just a blessing to us and a blessing to their families. And the way that you are stretching and growing them individually as well as in community with their families and with their classrooms and their teachers, we pray for an extra blessing and covering over the schools here in Mililani, um, public or private, and Central, Central Oahu and then throughout the rest of the islands, that as everyone is kind of feeling this pressure and squeeze and anticipation of um, a new school year beginning, that you make all things new and that you can bring comfort and peace to them and to their teachers and administrators, um, to the aides, the helpers. We pray for just the new school year to shine your light and that hearts would be softened and kids would know you because of your sons and daughters here, my brothers and sisters right here are light to their community. We release them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Beautiful place and um, just something real quick. The word Kako, the reason why um, this camp was called Kako is because um, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know this from myself, but I heard it at the camp. So Kako is like the Hawaiian word for together. Like everybody, the widest term for being together. And how beautiful is that, that out of this pandemic, out of this time, this um, time of COVID where everybody had to stay isolated, that um, students got to come together, leaders got to come together after two, three years of not seeing each other or just seeing each other over a screen, that we got to all come together. Um, five different churches, praise God for that. Five different churches. After we together, we all got to gather and praise and worship God. And so with that being said, I want to invite the students that went to camp up here. Pray for them, but before that, um, I just want to have a couple students share. I know I asked 
Fono and Cammy to share. So they're going to share like one or two minutes about what they took away from Cam and one of them. Yeah. So they'll show, share first and you guys can deliver if you want to see what's going on. Yeah.
church family how's it going good to see everybody here hey wasn't that awesome to be able to to partner with the next generation to see God move in the powerful way we seeing them transition from one grade to the next man we get to be a part of that and uh, many of you who are blessed by this ministry you give not just to to our church but you give through our church in as you saw just pouring in and investing into the next generation and so i want to say thank you and as you bring your offering your tithe before the lord today i just want you to know that that god is using it in power for the next generation at our church can you say amen to that amen well family a lot of amazing things god is doing in and around our church we want to share that with you but first i want to just say um there's something that happened last sunday that was just incredible i want to share that with you um this past Sunday, we had this thing called the Team Hope Paina, where we, this is the first time we ever did it, where we invited all of our volunteers, all of our leaders, and just people that were interested in knowing how to use their gifts, talents, and ability for the glory of God, and just kind of getting a little bit of um, the heart of our church. And so really excited. That was such a powerful time. I want to show you a little clip of what you um, may have missed out on this past week. And so let's take a look at that.
Wasn't that awesome? Oh my goodness. I'm just, again, grateful to God that we got to participate and do something with our church family in that space there at Kipapa Park last Sunday. Um, some of you might be wondering, like, what was that with the buckets and the, 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 the youth sitting on the buckets and, and then them like leaning up against each other? Well, that was just a cool visual illustration of them making a human table. We had, they were sitting on buckets. They leaned up against each other and then we moved the buckets from under them and they were just using each other to, to um, hold, to stay up. And that was just an illustration, a point to just say that um, we need each other. We need each other more than ever before. And by, with God's help, they were able to do something that would have been impossible for them to do on their own. And that was the point, that we can't do it on our own. We need each other. Now, um, speaking of that, we're, we're leaning into the um, a lot of amazing things, opportunities that God is giving us through this year. Um, one of those is our park night coming up, our park night. It's going to be August 12th at 6.30 where we're going to just take a moment to clean up the, the uh, Kipapa Park. 6.30 in the evening, we're going to clean up Kipapa Park. That's a Friday. And we're just going to walk around, pick up trash with our gloves. We're going to pick up some trash. We're going to clean the jungle gyms because we want to honor our community, bless our community, make sure our keiki are playing in a beautiful community and blessing it that way. And, and, and then after that, we're just going to have fun. We're going to bust out the, the volleyball net. We're going to eat together. We're going to enjoy ourselves. And so I want to invite you to that. Again, it's going to be August 12th, a Friday at 6.30, probably end at 8. And so join us for that. That's going to be phenomenal. Now, the very next day after service on the 13th, August 13th, we're going to have a Keiki Ministry meeting. If you're wanting to know more information about Keiki Ministry, how you can be involved or pour into it, we want to invite you to come out to that. It's going to be, again, right after service at um, on August 13th. And um, we're, we're excited about what God is doing again in our children's ministry. Well, family, we're continuing a series, as many of you know, called Let's Go. Some would say Let's Go. And we have just an incredible woman of God that's going to be bringing the word of God today. Her name is Pastor Chiomi Chow. You might recognize her last name because we have our executive pastor, Terrence Chow, who is, who is um, her husband. And um, we get to hear just her heart for how God is using her in the marketplace. I'm excited. I want to encourage you to grab your notes, lean in. Would you put your hands together and make some noise right there on your couch for Pastor Chiomi. Let's go, everybody. Woo! Good morning! For those of you don't, who don't know, I'm Chiomi. I am a volunteer pastor here at Hope Chapel Mililani and I'm married to Terrence, um, who is a paid pastor. And um, we have three wonderful children, um, Sarah, Jonathan, and Jason. And if you don't know, I actually work um, as a director of programs for a nonprofit called Family Programs Hawaii during the day. So. Anyways, I'm very happy to be here and I'm glad to be able to share this message with you today. But before we get started, I have a question for you. If you were in charge of planning an island-wide revival, who would you pick on your team? Think about it for a moment. Chat it in the chat. Um, for me, I was thinking about probably like Pastor Mike Kai, he's very likable, charismatic, or Wayne Cordero. I think Wayne would be great. I don't know what he's up to nowadays, but he would be great. Or maybe someone like um, Don O'Brien or Tisha, they're like radio personalities, they have a lot of followings. So those kind of people, right? Well, let's look at who Jesus picked. Jesus picked for his disciples, he picked a handful of fishermen. And he also picked, like Pastor Jared said last week, a zealot and a tax collector, which is not a very popular position. And he picked a bunch of people that we don't even know what they did. Their occupation wasn't even worth mentioning. So he picked ordinary people with ordinary jobs. Sounds like us. We're ordinary people with ordinary jobs. And I'm telling you that God has picked you to be on his team. 
He's planning a revival in the islands and he's picked you to be on his team. Isn't that cool? So today, what we're going to be talking about is that idea of God using us in our, mark, in, in our jobs, what they call marketplace ministers. Because I really truly believe that God has us in different positions all over the island for a purpose and he wants to use us each individual person he wants to use so let's get started oh i also want to share that if you're a student you have a great opportunity to minister to other students i'll tell you youth they don't like necessarily talking to adults they'd rather talk to their peer and you peers <laughs> have an opportunity to really minister to your other students. So please, you know, see it as an opportunity. So when I talk about marketplace, when I talk about job, think about your school. And I'll also tell you, for those who work in the school, you guys have great opportunities to minister to the next generation. And consider yourself, you know, uh, youth ministers or children ministry workers, right? And we are all marketplace ministers. So let's get started. The first thing that we want to focus on is to embrace your workplace. Now, in order for us to be effective in ministering at work, we need to embrace where we're at. We need to embrace our workplace. We need to embrace our boss. We need to embrace our coworkers, embrace our job duties. And you might be thinking, um, well, you've never met my boss, or you know, you don't know what I do for a living. Maybe it's not something that you really, truly, naturally enjoy. Um, so I want us to talk about a guy named Joseph, and you'll kind of see how he might, you might be able to relate with him, or actually, he might have a worse situation than you. So. As most of us know, Joseph was well liked by his father. In fact, his father gave him a beautiful robe, right? But his brothers were jealous. So one day his brothers threw him in a pit, beat him up, and sold him as a slave. And as a slave, God used him. That was his first place of marketplace ministry. That was his first first place to minister to others was as a slave and then wasn't too cool his boss Potiphar his pot his boss's wife was trying to make advances on him and he did not go for it so instead she made false allegations against him and so poor Joseph without doing anything wrong ended up a prisoner. He went from loved child of his father with his beautiful robe to being a slave to a prisoner. That's crazy. That's not fair. If I were him, oh my gosh, I would be so upset. I would be calling my lawyer. I don't know, I guess he didn't have lawyers back then, but I'd be trying to get a hold of anyone to tell them my story. Like, I don't belong here. This isn't fair. I would be totally fighting the system and getting upset, but I would have missed what Joseph did. Joseph was able to be used by God in his workplace and as a slave and even as a prisoner. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. He didn't waste his time complaining about his job complaining about his co-workers he embraced where God had placed him and that's what we need to do too and I will say some of you might be like okay but I'm only gonna stay at this job for a short time you know I have other plans I will say embrace even that time that you have I was able to I had a co-worker that I only worked for with for like two months and she was part-time so we didn't really spend that much time together but we did 
you know, create a bond. And she just called me the other day, calling for advice. And I was able to give her, share some wisdom, share some encouragement, and also pray for her. And then she just texted me this week, you know, catching me up on her decision and how she's thankful for my time with her. So I will say, spend the time that you have with those around you. You don't know how long you're gonna have with the person next to you in the next cubicle, but make the most of it. So back to Joseph. In Genesis 39, three through five, it was talking about Joseph while he was a slave. And it says, his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. And then later in verse 21 and 23, it talks about Joseph in the prison and it's kind of similar it says but the lord was with joseph and showed him kindness he gave him favor in the eyes of the man who watched over the prison the head of the prison put all the men who were in prison into joseph's care so whatever was done there was because of joseph the head of the prison did not worry about anything under joseph's care because the lord was with him the lord made all go well with whatever Joseph did. Wow. He embraced where God had him and God was with him. God was right there with him and he blessed all that he did. And isn't that cool that God can do that with us as well. And so that leads us to the next point. The next point is glorify the Lord through your work. So it says in Colossians 3, 23 to 24, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Remember who you are serving. You are serving the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are serving him through your workplace. So. Think about that. So you want to make him proud and you want to represent him well. Amen? Um, so whatever we do, as it says, we should do it with all our heart. Don't do it half-heartedly. Don't do it like, you know, just half, like whatever. Like, do it as if you're worshiping the Lord. Do it as an act of worship. Do it in a way that others can see that you are doing, that they can recognize the good, excellent work that you're doing. So let me ask you, do you have a position at work of influence? Do you have a position of influence at your workplace? Now, a lot of people might think, mm, no, you know, and you might think the leaders of wherever you work, the leaders of the business, the business owners, the executive committee, the board of directors, they have, you know, positions of influence. But I will tell you, if you have a position at a job, you have a position of influence. You're like, what? Yes. Everyone has influence. It's a matter if you use it or not. For example, someone that's super exuberant walks in the wind, it walks in the door. What is it happens? The whole room lights up, right? With excitement because they have influence. It's not because of their position, it's their influence. And I'm not saying that you have to be this bubbly, like amazing, like, you know, whatever personality. I'm saying that you have influence at your workplace. You can bring things down or you can lift people up right? And you have spiritual influence. God has given you authority that you can make a spiritual influence, like you can walk in and bring his spirit with you. So think about it, that you all have 
us, you all have a position of influence. Every one of us. Every one of us can make a difference and it doesn't matter who, like, it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what position you have, you can influence others. And it might just be, you know, a few coworkers, or it might be a large amount of people, but you have ability to make a difference, especially spiritual difference. So the question is, are you taking the opportunity to influence others, or are you being influenced by others? Hopefully you're making a spiritual difference towards others. It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Definitely when you're working, you should do it for the glory of God. Not for your own um, benefit, your own like people like being so happy for you or being so like, oh, good job, good job. Not for the pats on the back. You should do it so that God might be glorified. We can look at Joseph again in Genesis 39.3. It says there that his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all things he did to succeed in his hands. And then 23, again, it says, the head of the prison didn't worry about anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with him. The Lord made all go well with whatever Joseph did. Just as others saw the Lord was with Joseph, people can see that the Lord is with us. Hopefully, we, do, we are successful in our work and hopefully we give credit to God. You know, I was talking, um, well, I'm very um, inspired by Francis Oda. And he's a big wig in architecture and the business world in Hawaii. In fact, he's um, in the Hawaii Business Hall of Fame. Uh, he's a leader in the G70 group. Anyways, he shared with some of us that kind of like the secret um, the secret to his success is basically he wakes up every morning, spends time with God, and listens. God gives him downloads, and then he implements it. Isn't that cool? Like, he has, he was talking about this whole architectural, like, blueprint that he did for this international project that was actually pretty well known, and it came from his quiet time with the Lord. That's how he got the blueprint. So I'm like, that is cool. And so he was encouraging people to do it. And so I've done that before where I've been like, okay, Lord, you know, I just want to hear from you regarding my work, give me ideas. And he's given me great ideas, names for different things. He's given me um, fundraising ideas. He's given me like, I've asked him like, what should I do about this situation? and he's downloaded ideas. And so, try it sometime. It's, it's really fun. And I, I just wanna encourage you because I think we miss out sometimes because we're only thinking in our own brain for things and we're not asking the Lord to give us like some type of, you know, epiphany, some type of like revelation that we can share with others. And that he can be glorified because I used to I mean I would kind of like my friend my co-workers would kind of be weird would kind of feel <laughs> like it was kind of funny because I would be like oh in my quiet time today the Lord told me to, to uh, tell me this idea and I tell them the idea I'm like what do you guys think and they're like huh and they're like actually I they like the idea yeah actually that's a good idea so it's okay to tell them where it's from and give give God the glory so um we also see in Genesis that Joseph, um, as a prisoner, used his God-given gift of dream interpretation, right? That spiritual gift of dream interpretation. And he would um, interpret people's dreams. The big one is that he interpreted Pharaoh's dream, if you guys remember, about the heads of grain. And then he interpreted it in such a way that it would be seven years of plentiful, and then seven years of famine. And then the nation could, could, you know, store up all the things that they needed during the, the time of plentiful for the years of famine. And Pharaoh actually says, he, um, he asked his officials, 
can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the spirit of god then pharaoh said to joseph since god has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are you will be in charge of my court and all of my people will take orders from you only i sitting on my throne will have a higher rank than yours so he went from being a prisoner to being like second in charge that is so much that is definitely the favor of god amen but what really catches me catches my eye is that pharaoh said to his officials that joseph was so obviously filled with the spirit of god isn't that cool he saw that joseph was filled with the spirit of god and he wanted part of that he wanted he just wanted to uplift him and give him more position because of that but i was just thinking i would love for my co-workers my boss to be able to say that like oh my gosh she is so obviously filled with the spirit of god and it be like a positive thing and they would just see like wow it is so evident that the holy spirit is in her and this is something to celebrate so i'm letting you know like don't just be filled with the spirit at church or at life group be filled with the spirit even at work and utilize your god-given gifts whatever that might be even your spiritual gifts utilize them at work because god can be glorified through that amen all right so next point the last point actually is bring god's kingdom to your workplace so invite the Holy Spirit into your workplace and operate your daily job with the indwelling of, your, of His Spirit in you. So when you're at your job, make sure that you're filled with the Spirit. Make sure you're displaying the fruit of the Spirit, right? Think about it. Do you have love, joy, peace, patience? kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you have those attributes even when things are rough? Even when people around you don't have those, do you show those? Hopefully you do. And I know that it's hard when it's hard. You know, I know that it's difficult when you're tired or it's difficult when you have bad news or it's difficult when life gets stressful and work you have way too much work but still or even more so you need the holy spirit in you to shine forth because in our own flesh we'll just react and we don't want to we want his spirit to really respond to what is going on so um I'll, I'll give you you know kind of a um an example you know i was um i'm a so i'm a director of programs right i have to be in charge of different things and it's difficult sometimes we have to make difficult decisions in fact this past week on monday i had to terminate someone and that's hard but the thing is is that it can be done still with the spirit of god still with love still with peace still with gentleness just because someone isn't living up to the expectations of the job doesn't mean that you have to treat them poorly you can respond still with love and kindness in the situation and so i gotta admit it's glory to god that it went well and the person totally understood and was actually um, showed appreciation for how it was handled um so 
Another thing that you can do is that, um, I don't know if you guys remember, but Pastor Jared had shown us a picture of this wall of gratitude. So I actually did it. Did anyone else do it? I actually have, and you can see a picture of my wall of gratitude. And I put it up and it's just started small. I didn't tell anyone, I didn't tell my coworkers. I just started putting up more post-its and more post-its as time went on for things that I was grateful for. And it's great for me to, you know, like think, thank you Lord for this and thank you Lord for that throughout my day. Um, so anyways, it's kind of cool because people are starting to notice it and they're surprised that their name is up there and they're really like tickled by the, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was up there. I'm like, yes, of course, I'm so thankful to God for you. and whatever I put up there about it. It's not just their name, it was something that they did or said or was helpful or something. And so even my boss was like the other day like, oh, even I'm on there? I'm like, yes, of course, I'm thankful for you and the things you do. And it really touches their heart. And we wanna do things, more things like that, that touches our coworkers' heart. Um, and I would say another thing to do is to pray. Like Pastor Jared has mentioned before, pray um, when you get a chance for people, with people. At my old job, we used to have a prayer um, group. I kind of formed a prayer group with some people and we would ask even our non-Christian friends for you know, any, any prayer requests that they have. And it's, kind of, it's really neat to see God like answer our prayers. Like there's been times that we've prayed for finances for you know, our organization and then we get to see checks come in. So that my boss, who's not a Christian, actually had to admit she could see God's blessings. And one time something happened and we're all like, yeah, praise Jesus. She actually said praise Jesus too. Isn't that cool? So. Hopefully, you know, um, you're able to pray for people. And I would be respectful. I, we met for prayer during our lunch break so that you're not taking away from your job time. Um, but be, you know, but take the opportunities for sure. And so, you know, you want to invite his kingdom to come and his will be done in your workplace as it is in heaven. Right, that is what we want to do, um, and I will tell you that you know what you do. I mean, it can be small things or it can be big things. Sometimes the small things makes a difference, and you might not think it does, but it does. When I was um, in college at UH, I had a job at the library, and I remember one of my coworkers, a fellow student was really down one day and she had shared that her girlfriend had broken up with her and I really didn't know what to say but like God told me like tell her I love her and so I just did I was like um I'm not sure if it comforts you at all but I wanted to let you know that Jesus loves you and she's like really I go I go yeah She's like, you really think so? I go, I know so. And so she said, wow, you know, that does, that does comfort me. And I kind of left it at that. Sometimes we just plant seeds and let the other people water them, but it made a difference. And it's interesting because I think sometimes we take it for granted that we know that Jesus loves us. Right? I mean, I grew up singing, Jesus loves me, this I know. You know, like the whole song, and I knew that Jesus loved me. I went to church with my grandmother. I, all these things, I like, I knew that I was adored by God, you know? But we take it for granted that other people don't know. There's people out there that truly do not know that Jesus loves them. There could be people that you spend eight hours a day in the same room with that doesn't know that God loves them, that God has a plan for them, that Jesus died for them, 
They don't know the hope that we have. They don't know the joy that we have. And we have to share it with them. We have to share like so that they can experience God's love and grace through us. And even for our words, we have to share it. So I want to encourage you guys. You are on God's team. So make sure you're doing your part of the teamwork. And as we know about Joseph, like God used him in a great way to um, keep the Egyptians from starving, right? Because they were able to um, store up um, grain and then he was also able to bless his family and it was kind of came full circle and he was able to actually um, forgive his family and show God's grace upon them um, so I want to encourage you I know this series we're really talking about let's go and I want to encourage you to really go like don't just listen to this series and sit back and say that's a really good idea let me write that down oh yeah good job pastor Jared good job pastor whatever it's it, it's not about doing a good job for us. We want to see His kingdom come. We want to see revival in this island. And it's up to all of us to do our part. So, you know, I don't want to hear like, great sermon, Chiomi. I don't, I, it doesn't build me up. What would really be great if you're like, oh my gosh, I was encouraged and this is what I did. So I want to encourage you guys, let's go, let's really do this, beep, beep. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your grace upon us. Thank you for placing us at our workplace for a purpose. Lord, we pray that we will be ministers of your word. Lord, we pray that you use us. We pray that we might respond to the opportunities that you put in front of us. Put people on our hearts that we can pray with, pray for, and minister to. And we just thank you so much that you are with us in our workplace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joey. Hallelujah. Yes, God. We need to go out there and show the love of Jesus Christ. It's our mission field. Whether in high school, college, work, or home, that is our mission field. We share the love of Christ. That's powerful. That's good. We thank you. And as you go out with this last two songs, um, if you need prayer, right after this, Pastor Jared would love to pray for you. I need prayer. And he'll be right there. So please, we all need prayer. Okay? And that, that's, that's the answer. Because Jesus Christ does love you. Amen, church?
Yeah.